The city of Ottawa has a, a vibrant, diverse Aboriginal population of First Nations from various uh, backgrounds from across, from coast to coast to coast, Inuit people and Métis people from, again, from coast to coast to coast. So it's very vibrant, it's very diverse. Diversity must be recognized because we're not all in one and the same people. Absolutely, we're not. And that is critical to raise that awareness. We are rich with our culture and our identity and our languages, and we have so much to contribute, not only to our communities, but to the whole entire city of Ottawa and, and Canadian society in general. There are so many nations here that I encourage many of the uh, First Nations, Inuit and Métis people to examine or search about their identity. The non-Indigenous peoples should ask questions and try to research as much as possible as to what happened to the Indigenous peoples of this country. It's time that the truth was brought out. It was a shameful part of our past and it's time to reconcile. We've seen a lot, a lot of changes. Now how people say I'm proud to say I'm First Nations or Métis or, or Inuit. And so thank goodness the times are a-changing. We wear our sashes, both Rita and I, and it's not all our family, but both Rita and I wear our sashes because of Grandma, because of the things that she suffered in her day. We're very fortunate at this time of the era that we are permitted to speak the language or for those many of us that weren't as fortunate to speak whatever language that we have or knowledge of and to share that and to be able to pass that on generationally so the tomorrows of our peoples will be carrying more pride and dignity. I learned many years ago about the seven, uh, seven grandfather teaching. That's what I carry. You need to respect people and never judge them when they come. I think about myself when I, when I came here. I, uh, all I wanted to do was uh, to be with my own people. So I found a, a friendship center. I found uh, Minwash and uh, where people, where our people congregated. Uh, and I started learning about uh, the local cultures. Uh, connecting with, uh, with the locals, I was, I was able to find myself. As a person from uh, mixed ancestry, I want to say uh, that I am grateful and that I am welcomed by the Algonquin people to be on their land. I am a visitor. They are, they are the people of this land, and I'm grateful that they, they allow me to live on their land. Ottawa needs first and foremost to recognize whose territory that they're on. Acknowledge the land of the Algonquin people was never surrendered, never ceded, never given away. Ottawa needs to acknowledge that settlers are here, and they need to form a relationship with the Algonquin people and they need to form a relationship with Aboriginal people. But I do see a change. One of the great things about Ottawa is that we have a really active urban Indigenous community. And we don't only have a large contingent of First Nations students, but we also have a thriving Métis community and an Inuit community here that is very strong. And so we try and do the best we can to support the unique needs of those different groups of students. Seeing the students, you know, being comfortable and being uh, that they can be themselves when they come here and we most definitely do that and uh, um, we've heard great feedback from the students themselves and you know I'm, I'm so proud that um, we have that Indigenous success and we celebrate that. There are resources out there and it's very good to get in touch with other students um, and these resource centers that are here to help the students integrate into uh, the university life. 
The community here really intentionally tries to build that sense of family among students because students can feel really um, lonely when they come here for the first time. Oftentimes they're far away from their community, far away from their family, and we want them to know that there's a place for them. You know, this is their place. I think as a future student in any institution post-secondary, it's important to self-identify d'être capable d'aller chercher les ressources nécessaires dans les centres variés, soit dans les institutions ou soit à l'extérieur. Il y a une fierté qui vient avec son auto-identification en tant qu'Autochtone. Puis je pense que si on la vit, on va être capable de poursuivre avec euh, une approche globale, avec qui on est, puis c'est quoi notre place dans la société d'aujourd'hui. Coming to Ottawa, it was a little bit scary and absolutely no family here. Um, so do your research before you come. Seek out the resources that could possibly help you before you get here. And just be in contact with other or Aboriginal organizations. So everyone needs a place to call home. Everyone needs a place to have that sense of belonging. And I really believe that our Ottawa can do that. When the women walk through our door, they feel safe. They feel that they're in a place where people understand them. They're, they feel very comfortable here. And whatever their need is, we can accommodate most of it. And the ones that we can't, we will refer to our, our organizations, our indigenous organizations in the community first. Folks actually uh, participate in the community. And if you're coming from a place of um, isolation or from chaos, um, that can be a real challenge because you're, you can often be taught um, some uh, rules about safety. And, and the first thing about safety is um, don't connect with people. And so when we say that, hey, we do this communal kitchen piece and we ask that, that a young woman cook, you know, once every week and a half for the entire group, they're now taking care of an entire community. And that can generate not only um, some cooking skills and some budgeting and some life skills, but it generates a little bit of room for repair in terms of relationship to self and also reaching out to others and to the community as a whole. We provide an entire range of services from birth to death to the Inuit community that is visiting Ottawa or has settled in the South. TI is famous for putting on uh, wonderful Inuit events with uh, traditional um, games, traditional dancing, and most importantly, traditional food. <laughs> well, as a, an Indigenous housing corporation, the first thing that we offer to tenants is simply being able to be culturally sensitive and competent. We're an Indigenous organization serving Indigenous people and we have connections in the community and we take it one step further in terms of being able to offer referral services and connecting really tenants, um, the individuals, the families, the children, seniors with other Indigenous services and organizations here in the city. If you want to help a child you need to start with helping parents. So we do a lot of parent support and actually just recently uh, expanded to our fourth building in Vanier um, with the main focus there on um, helping parents through the early on program for zero to six as well as our family support program so that parents feel that they're not on this journey of being a parent alone, that they come here, they get whatever kind of support they want. And in the long run, we found that that has been the best way to help the children is to connect other Inuit parents to Inuit parents who then turn out to support each other. And we really love when a new family comes in, welcoming them to Ottawa and ensuring that they have some support and help navigating this complex bureaucratic system that we, that we live in in the South. To have a, a client secure work so that they can provide for their family is life-changing in many cases. Our goal is to make people employable, and if we have to remove the barriers, that's what we're here for. We recently just had a young man who was working in a cigarette store. 
So he had come to us and said that he really wanted to be um, a heavy equipment operator. He wanted to work in a, in a construction field on the territory, but he didn't have the license to do that or the means to. So we actually sent him to Morrisburg and he stayed on site and um, took their I believe it was 11 weeks at the beginning, their intense training, and it was a pre-apprenticeship program to heavy equipment operator training. He recently just finished that portion of his program. He finished top four in his class and he's now working in Kingston with Bar Construction. And he will be working with them till September where he goes back to school and starts his apprenticeship training. So when you hear a success story like that, it's, it, it feels good to know that you were part of that and part of that process. When I first was part of this city, we were invisible. It was evident that we were invisible. People didn't see us. We weren't in the 2020 plan. We were not engaged uh, politically. Uh, we were not seen. And I think over the 20 year period, I think we've reached a point where there has been maturity on both sides, our people and, and the city. And I think that we have worked very hard to become a visible member or a visible community of this city of Ottawa. For me, being an artist of sort of traditional materials means knowing your culture, uh, knowing your community. Um, and if you don't, getting to know your community, getting to your culture, just basically making an effort. The art artist has kind of creative a creative realm that they can expand on. So that's my teaching. So I think what we think is contemporary today, well of course it is contemporary, but we're using uh, materials that are available today and you're just applying it to uh, old techniques that our ancestors have used. Something I really enjoy doing is teaching. Um, you, Most of us Inuit artists learn by watching. That's how we learn. Where I come from, uh, we have lots of polar bears and I've seen many polar bears throughout my lifetime. It's very hard to get northern stone down here, so I use the materials from down here. It comes from Wakefield and it's a white granite and I make white bears. The fish scale uh, art practice is, is, although it's a new art form, it has old qualities, so we're using every part of the animal that we can. What they say is that, you know, uh, indigenous people are, are happy not to be in total control of uh, the art that you're doing, that uh, uh, the material has something to say. With sewing, I've always sewn. So in Inuit culture, women always sewed. It was part of survival. And if you look at the fashion back then, the designs, it evolved, and they adapted whatever they could use. Because if you look at the history, Inuit were always um, the designs of their amautis, the coats, they, they changed and we can't just stop from there. Uh, we have to keep being creative and innovative. Inuit artists used to make small amulets for themselves, personal amulet, could be out of teeth, uh, bone or walrus uh, tusk, and people would make their own personal amulets and then um, when the government started thinking of ways for, to, for Inuit to support themselves, Inuit art was introduced to make big pieces instead of small amulets. These paintings are, especially about my family, are a history of how Canada was made when they mo were moved to the high Arctic. It was part of Canadian sovereignty and that should be remembered. Ottawa is a beautiful city, absolutely it is. There are beautiful, wonderful people here, absolutely there are. However, there is still racism and we see it. The leadership of Ottawa has to begin by combating racism, acknowledging there's racism here and work with our people because we do have the solutions, absolutely we do. Reconciliation is not about the feather fluffing Indian and peace and love or a new age concept, no it isn't. I'm speaking from my heart and soul and my spirit here that reconciliation is about the truth and Ottawa needs to begin by the truth. To acknowledge how this land became the city of Ottawa, why it became a city. The truth is that Algonquin families were removed from their homeland here 
They were dispossessed. We start with the truth. Start with the truth about how the Oblates and what they did to Algonquin people. Start with that truth, number one. Because I am a firm believer that through truth telling, we will build healing and we will build the right path and we will form that right relationship that was always intended between First Nations and settler nations. And that is to live in mutual understanding, peace and respect.